Um, you know, Jim, Eunice Yoon has been uh, great on this stuff all along, always is, and I want to get to her now in China and just get her take on exactly what it is we're hearing, because there's been, Eunice, just a, uh, so much news uh, in these last 28, uh, 24 to 48 hours, it's hard to keep track. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of what we're hearing right now, uh, there's a lot of anger on social media uh, directed against the DD founders and their families. Uh, right now, they're being called traitors with hashtags about the family and the company uh, getting about 1.5 billion views. Now, this comes after DD um, was uh, uh, had its app uh, taken off of the app stores for new users. But also today, a new development is that DD's app has been removed from super app WeChat as well as Alipay. So WeChat and Alipay are not technically app stores, but they have a lot of mini programs embedded into their apps because they are um, so, so major. Um, another thing that we heard today was that Didi was among um, several tech companies, which included Alibaba as well as Tencent, that were fined by the antitrust regulators. Now, these were small fines uh, for um, some um, anti-monopolistic behavior, about $80,000 per penalty. But it still uh, shows you just the um, overall environment about how Beijing is, is really laying down the law and making sure that people know uh, that uh, these uh, techn technology companies need to answer to Beijing. Now, another thing that was interesting today was that Chinese media was um, interpreting and reviewing uh, the guidelines that we got out of Beijing yesterday about uh, the uh, overseas listings. And uh, um, the focus has been on one point, that was that Beijing is looking to close a loophole that has been used very frequently by Chinese tech companies that are looking to list overseas. So this is the, the variable interest entity or the VIE structure, which essentially is a way for Chinese tech companies to get around the regulations here about sensitive data and to be able to put profits into an offshore entity, usually in a place like the Cayman Islands, and so then be able to tap into the overseas capital markets. So um, the, for, for many, many years, a decades, uh, the Chinese government has not approved of this necessarily, not outright anyway, but but uh, um, hasn't necessarily been, um, has tolerated it uh, just because it has been seen as a way for Chinese tech companies to be able to raise money overseas, which of course is really good for the companies in terms of their expansion plans, but it looks as though that um, VIE structure um, might um, have a couple tweaks coming to it. Um, another thing that just happened a couple of, of minutes ago is that Chinese media have started reporting that Didi is facing two class in action, class action lawsuits in the United States. Um, these are two law firms uh, based in the U.S. And the lawsuits uh, accuse them of not disclosing Beijing's warning. Guys? Okay, uh, one quick question. First of all, I'm glad you're not wearing the mask. It gives me hope that the uh, variant is under control. Let's talk crypto for a yeah. second, Eunice. I am getting reports. I mean, people are dumping, furiously dumping the, uh, their Bitcoin mining facility cards, which are, uh, they are mostly made yeah. by NVIDIA, but they are scrap. But the crackdown here started in May. Is it intensifying? And why? Because it sure does seem like the Chinese don't want crypto in their country. Yeah, um, I talked to a lot of people in the crypto industry um, who have been mining um, or are distributors uh, for these mining machines. And um, they said that they feel that this crackdown is real. Um, that at one point, uh, there were some who thought that maybe this is just going to be a temporary um, action uh, uh, before the, the 100th birthday party of the Communist Party. But now, um, given the way that uh, the government has been moving, uh, they feel that the momentum is behind them to get some of their machines out. And actually, that's what they've been doing. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.